Hi students and friends, welcome to the channel Learn and Teach by Sarayas. I will continue my video lesson for CAIE 5070 past papers and I was doing paper 4 for chemistry 5070. This time I have selected October November 2022 and the paper is 42. I'm not going to read the instructions as I have already discussed the instructions in my previous videos. So I'll start with the question number one. Three color colorless gases A, B, and C have the properties shown. Gas A, more dense than air and soluble in water. Gas B, more dense than air and it's insoluble in water. Gas C, less dense than air, soluble in water. Some sets of apparatus P, Q and R used to collect gases are shown. Here's P, Q and then we have R. <clears throat> A. State which set of apparatus P, Q or R is most suitable to collect gas A. P is more suitable to collect gas A because it is heavier or dense than air and also in uh, also soluble in water. So I will write P here. B, R is used to collect gas B. Number one, state why Q is not used to collect gas B. The reason is that B is more dense than air. You see here, B is more dense than air. B is more dense than air. You can even write B has higher density than air. Number three, state why R is more suitable than P to collect gas B. B is insoluble in water, so you can easily tell when the gas jar was full. B is insoluble in water. Easily tells when the gas jar was full. C. State why R is not used to collect gas C. It's very simple. C is soluble in water. You see here, C is soluble in water, so you can't use this. C is soluble in water. Two, a student electrolyzes two aqueous solutions using the apparatus shown. A, name apparatus E. Apparatus E is beaker, so you write beaker here. B, complete the table. We have aqueous potassium iodide and dilute sulfuric acid. So at anode, we will get iodine. The name of the product is written here for aqueous potassium iodide. So observation will be solution turns brown. Solution turns brown. At cathode, hydrogen gas is produced. So we'll see the bubbles of colorless gas. So you can even write bubbles colorless because the bubbles of hydrogen gas has no color. At anode for dilute sulfuric acid, oxygen is produced. So you write again, you write colorless bubbles because also oxygen also does not have any color in water. 
at cathode hydrogen gas is produced because the bubbles of colorless gas it's already written here so you write hydrogen c describe the test used to identify oxygen gas glowing spent and relight or rekindle relight or rekindle because oxygen helps in burning Number three, the equation for the reaction of magnesium with dilute hydrochloric acid is shown. MgS plus 2HCl equals gives MgCl2 equals plus H2 gas. A student investigates the rate of this reaction at three different temperatures. This is the whole setup. You have magnesium and dilute sulfuric uh, hydrochloric acid in the conical flask and it's connected to apparatus F. In each experiment, the student adds dilute hydrochloric acid to magnesium. The volume of hydrogen in apparatus F is recorded every, every 30 seconds. A. Name apparatus F. Now you have to write the name for apparatus F. It's used to collect gas, so it's gas syringe. B, name a piece of apparatus that the student could use to keep the temperature of the conical flask and its content constant. Can use thermostatically, uh, thermostatically controlled water bath. Water bath. Thermostatically. Control. C. Hydrogen gas is a product of the reaction. One describe the test used to identify hydrogen gas. For the test of hydrogen gas, you can use burning spint of matchstick. Burning matchstick or splint. Pops up or squeaky sound is a result or observation for hydrogen gas. Number two, student uses the measurement of volume as time increases to determine the rate of the of this reaction. State a different measurement that the student could make as time increases to determine the rate of reaction. The mass of the flask contents, it will decrease or change. So you can have mass of con flask. B, in each of the three experiments, the contents of the flask are at different temperature. All other variables are kept constant. The three experiments are labeled X, Y, and Z. You see, for X, the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade. For Y, the temperature is 40 degrees centigrade. For Z, the temperature is 60 degrees centigrade. The hydrochloric acid is in excess in each of the three experiments. A catalyst is not used. Identify two variables that are kept constant in this investigation. So you can write any two of uh, these. Like uh, you can write the mass of magnesium. Mass of magnesium. Particle size of magnesium. Or you can even write concentration of acid use. Like mole of acid.
as hydrochloric acid is in excess in each of the experiment, so you can't write volume of the acid. E, the student plots a graph of the results. So on x-axis, we have time. On y-axis, we have volume of hydrogen per centimeter cube. Number one, describe how the graph is used to decide which experiment has the greatest rate. So it must have steepest, steepest gradient or it levels off first. This tells that this uh, experiment has greatest rate. So you, you will write graph levels of first or steepest gradient. Must have the greatest rate. Number two, write a letter in each box on the graph to identify experiments X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z, you see x y and z for x is carried out at 20 degrees centigrade y is carried out at 40 degrees centigrade z is carried out at 60 degrees centigrade so z, z must be of higher rate so the graph which levels of first must be z so this is experiment z experiment second experiment must be of y because it's not labeling of before z but before x the last one left will be x number three describe how the graph shows that the reaction stops <clears throat> the graph becomes parallel or horizontal or zero gradient becomes zero gradient becomes Zero. Graph become horizontal. Or you can write graph level of Number four, explain why the reaction stop all the magnesium used up. All the magnesium is used up. Magnesium is the limiting reactant in this reaction. <clears throat> Number four, a student is provided with two bottles labeled A and B and a supply of water. One of the bottles contains one gram of solid potassium chloride, KCl. The other bottle contains one gram of solid calcium chloride, CaCl2. When potassium chloride dissolves in water, the change is endothermic. Endothermic means absorbs heat. When calcium chloride dissolves in water, the change is exothermic. So it means it's the one which releases heat. Plan experiments based on dissolving the solids in water to decide which compound is in each bottle, which compound produces the greatest heat change per gram of solid. Your plan may use any of the apparatus normally found in chemistry laboratory, but no other chemicals. Your plan must state all the measurements you need to make. Your plan must use the same experimental procedure for each solid. So we'll take equal volumes of water. Mass will, uh, is already provided. So we'll still bore the solids in water. <clears throat> Measure the temperature using thermometer. Calcium chloride gives heat, which means it releases heat because uh, it's written in the questions exothermic. For potassium chloride, it must absorb heat so, so there must be fall in temperature for potassium chloride endothermic. So we will measure the temperature change. The greatest heat change indicates that calcium chloride is the sample.
So you write equal volumes of water used both solid dissolved in water and stirred. measure the temperature using thermometer calcium chloride CaCl2 gives a rise in temperature while KCL gives drop in temperature. greatest temperature or heat change that is rise indicates that the sample is calcium chloride. Here is a question number five. Solution K is dilute sulfuric acid, H2SO4. A student determines the concentration of solution K using a method that involves type ratio. Student measures 20 centimeter cube of solution K using a pipette. Student makes up the solution to 250 centimeter cube with distilled water. This is solution L. Name another piece of apparatus that could be used instead of a pipette to accurately measure 20 centimeter cube of solution K. Spirit. Both Beirut and Pipet has higher accuracy. So I'll write Beirut here. B. Name the container in which solution L is made. Standard flask or volumetric flask? C. A pipette is used to transfer 25 centimeter cube of solution L into a conical flask. Name the other piece of apparatus that is used with the pipette. Now it's important uh, we have to use the bulb with pipette. This is the shape of the pipette. And use bulb is also known as pipette filler. D. Student adds three drops of methyl orange to solution L in the conical flask and then places the flask on a white tile. Student fills a beard with 0.1 mole per dm cube potassium hydroxide KOH aqueous. The KOH aqueous is added to the flask until there is a change in color. The color change. Number one, state which liquid should be used to wash out the beard before filling the beard with KOH. For use in the titration, definitely it was the aqueous potassium hydroxide. So you write KOH aqueous. Number two, explain why the conical flask is placed on a white tile. You see the color change clearly. You see the color change. The color change is actually the indicator. Number three, state the color change of the methyl orange indicator at the end point. The color change is from dash to dash. So initially, it's added to alkali, then we have added, it's added to acid, then we have added a potassium hydroxide, which is alkali from period. So acid to alkali. 
so in acidic medium the color will be red and in alkaline medium it will turn to orange e the student does three tirations diagrams below show parts of the beret with the liquid levels both at the beginning and at the end of each titration so here is the result we need to use these these diagrams will be used to complete the following table so for number 1 we have final beret reading if you look at this 21 uh, 24.12 24.2 .2 cm cube what about the initial reading this is zero so you will write zero here the volume added will be 24.2 2 because final minus initial will give you 24.2. For second titration, the final period reading will be 46.12345. 46.5. What about the initial reading? 25.12. 25.2. So if you will subtract 25.2 from 46.5. We will get 21.3. For third titration, okay, coming back to this uh, titration number two, first of all, we need to calculate the difference. Uh, I'm already done with this. Uh, for the third titration, the final bureau trading will be 32.32. 32. 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 32.7 will be the final bureau trading. Initial reading will be 11.2. So let's see the difference between these two. 32 minus 7, uh, 0.7 minus uh, 11.2. 7 minus 2 will be 5. 2 minus 1 will be 1. 3 minus 1 will be 21. 21 point five which of these uh, will be best titration results it must be 21.3 and 21.5 the reason is that 24.2 is much higher than these two values these two values are closer to each other also so we'll take these two as best titration results take the best titration results in the table use our titration results to calculate the average volume of dh so what we will do, we will add these two, 21.3 plus 21.5 and divided by 2. What we will get? We will get 21.4 centimeter cube. F, calculate the number of volts of KOH in the average volume of 0.1 mole per nm to KOH used. So 0.1 mole per dm cube means 1000 centimeter cube contains 0.1 mole therefore 21.4 centimeter cube contains x moles so x will be equal to 0.1 multiplied by 21.4 divided by 1000 so 0.1 multiplied by 21.4 divided by 1000 We'll get 2.14 into 10 is to power minus 3 is the final answer. The equation for the reaction of potassium hydroxide with sulfuric acid is shown. This is the reaction. 2KOH plus H2SO4 gives K2SO4 plus 2H2O. Use this equation to calculate the number of moles of H2SO4 in 25 centimeter cube of solution L. So KOH and H2SO4 according to the equation, one mole reacts with, sorry, two moles reacts with one mole. Therefore, 2.14 into 10 raised to power minus 3 reacts with x mole. So x becomes equal to 2.14 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 3 divided by <coughs> 2. 0 0.00214 divided by 2. We get 
1.07 into 10 raised to power minus 3. Calculate the number of moles of H2SO4 in 25 centimeter cube of solution. And we have already calculated the number of moles in 25 centimeter cube. So you will write 25 centimeter cube contains 1.07 into 10 raised to power minus 3. Therefore, 250 centimeter cube contains X moles. So X becomes equal to 250. Multiply by 1.07 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 25. 1, 10. So you will multiply 10 by 1.07 to 10 to the power minus 3. You will get 1.07 into 10 to the power minus 2. Or you can write 0 0.0107. Reduce the number of moles of H2SO4 in 20 centimeter cube of solution K. So it must be same. Because 20 centimeter cube of solution is added to 250 centimeter cube. So the number of moles will be same 0 0.0107. Calculate the concentration of solution K in mole per dm cube. These moles are in 20 centimeter cube. So 20 centimeter cube contains 0 0.0107 moles. Therefore, 1000 centimeter cube contains X moles. So X equals to 1000 multiply by 0 0.0107 and divided by 20. 1000 multiply by 0 0.0107 divided by 20. 0 0.535, 0 0.535 moles per dm cube. Okay, a student, a student, does the same experiment using 30 drops of methyl orange instead of 2 drops of methyl orange. Methyl orange is acidic. State if the average titration volume of KOH is smaller, larger, or unchanged when 30 drops of methyl orange are used. KOH is alkali, and we are adding alkali to acid. So if the indicator is acidic, so it will definitely uh, neutralize some of the alkali. So the volume will be larger because uh, the concentration of the acid increases more acids added to the conical flask Therefore, higher volume will be required. More QH required to neutralize. Question number six. Student is provided with aqueous potassium uh, copper two chloride, aqueous zinc sulfate, and an aqueous solution labeled X. Student tests the three solutions by adding each reagent shown in the table. A. Complete the table with the expected observations. So the reagent is uh, aqueous sodium hydroxide, and for copper two chloride, we will get blue precipitate and in excess of aqueous sodium hydroxide, these will remain or insoluble. In case of zinc sulfate, we we'll get white precipitate. And it's soluble in excess, so you will write soluble here. For X, we'll get green precipitate and precipitate remains. Recall green precipitates are either of Fe plus 2 or Cr plus 3. But here it remains, which means it's insoluble. So, so it must be of Fe plus 2. Aqueous ammonia for 
copper 2 chloride again you will get blue precipitate and in excess of aqueous ammonia we get deep blue solution in case of zinc sulfate we get white precipitate and we will get colorless solution in case of x we will get green precipitate and the precipitate again remains because these are of fe plus 2 by the way for cr3 plus precipitate also remains it does not dissolve in excess of aqueous ammonia Aqueous silver nitrate and dilute nitric acid. Silver nitrate is the test for the chloride ion. So here we'll get white precipitate. And in case of zinc sulfate, no reaction or no change. In case of X, they have mentioned yellow precipitate. Yellow precipitate are of I negative. So there must be iodide ion. Aqueous barium nitrate and dilute nitric acid. Barium nitrate is a test for the sulfate ion. Uh, so we will get white precipitate for zinc sulfate only. In case of copper 2 chloride, we'll get no change. For X, we have also mentioned no change. So sulfate ion is absent here. Sulfate ion absent. Now they are asking about the identity of X. You can write iron 2 chloride. FeI2 or iron 2 iodide. Number seven, when alcohols burn, they release heat. Student uses the apparatus shown to investigate the amount of heat released when the five different alcohols burn. So here's the setup. We have thermometer, we have metal container, we have 20. 200 centimeter cube of water. We have burner containing alcohol. Student determines the temperature rise of 200 centimeter cube of water when an alcohol burns. Student repeats the experiment using the same amount of each alcohol. Now, number of carbon atoms? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I see the temperature change. For 2, we have 25 degrees centigrade rise. For 3, we have 46 degrees centigrade rise. For Four, we have 53 degrees centigrade rise. For five, we have 67 degrees centigrade rise. For six, we have 81 degree centigrade rise in temperature. Now the next part, what they are saying. A, plot the results on the grid. Circle the anomalous point on the grid. Draw a straight line of best fit. So for your convenience, I'm going to show the values here so it will be easier to understand how i'm getting this graph i'm writing the values for each carbonate start from two we have two three four five and six so we have 25 for two carbon atom 46 for three uh, 53 for 4, 67 for 5, and 81 for 6. These are the values. Now it will be easier for us to draw the graph. For 2, 2 carbon, it must be 25. So we'll get the spot here, somewhere here. spot dot for 3 46 so we must get here for 4 53 48 50 53 must be here
okay now for four for five we get uh, we must have 67 <laughs> degree centigrade rise in temperature so it must be here for six the temperature rise is 81 so it must be here cross straight line of best fit Extend the line of best fit on your graph. I've I'm done it. So I'm extending this line. Use the extended line to reduce the expected temperature rise if an alcohol with seven carbon atoms used in the experiment. So let's calculate for the seven carbon. So it must be above 90, here 80. 82, 84, 86, 88, 90, and it's like around 92, 92 degrees centigrade. So if you look at this graph carefully, it must be like between 92 to 96 degrees. So this is a spot going like this. The initial temperature of the water is 15 degrees centigrade. Explain why this means it is not possible for the student to obtain the temperature rise in B1. Because the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. Boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. So final temperature will be above 100 degrees centigrade. So it's not possible for the student to obtain the temperature rise. Number three, it suggests one change that can be made to the experiment that would make it possible to obtain the temperature rise in B1. You can use ice. Use ice or water below 4 degrees centigrade. Thanks for watching. Press like and share my videos. Keep comments. For more videos, videos, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon.